Art thou in the darkness, minded not for It was a winter evening, then snow was falling fast. There was a little traveling wanderer came trotting through the blast. Yes, I am a poet. Hetty Saunders, I am. And long ago, back in 1800, when just ago I was a little traveling wanderer. I crossed that wide, wide Delaware River with my father and my brothers, all of us on a freedom journey. But we were so afraid. For what if we were caught? Back to Delaware, back to slavery. If, if I put myself in the place of the slave moving towards freedom, the big vision is you're moving towards freedom. But the immediate vision, what happens at this moment, is where, where am I putting my foot at the next, in the next second? Darkness and leads thee. Wendell White brings an important visual perspective into understanding this place. This place is the spot along the Delaware River where, back in 1800, a very young Hetty Saunders made a perilous crossing from a slave state to the relative safety of New Jersey. Hers is one of the stories being told in Seven Steps to Freedom, a cell phone tour and website about the Underground Railroad in Salem County. Seven different sites feature stories you can hear by making a call. My name is Abigail Goodwin, and this is my house. Shelter it is for my sister Elizabeth and me. Shelter, too, for those seeking freedom. Shh. If thee can keep a secret, I will tell thee of a time we extended hospitality. As Quakers... What makes this house particularly noteworthy is that unlike many locations, there is a great deal of documentation about what happened here. Because Abigail Goodwin wrote letters about her activities to William Still in Philadelphia. Come join the abolitionists, ye sons and daughters all. Because of that documentation, the house was designated by the National Park Service as a network to freedom site, and it was the first and thus far still the only site so designated in New Jersey. But danger and slave catchers, they're real. So I told him, hurry on to Canada. He left the next day. Now if thee can believe, just three months later, I got word that Samuel was in Massachusetts. A dentist he is, and helping us do good work on the, shh, Underground Railroad. We have provided a, a verbal picture of the past. Wendell is bringing a visual picture or an interpretation of the past into the present. It's a project that fits right into photographer Wendell A. White's work. He spent 10 years documenting historically African-American communities in South Jersey for a project called Small Towns, Black Lives. In Schools for the Colored, he focused on school buildings from the time of segregation, some still there, some not. Most of White's photos for the Seven Steps to Freedom Project are of locations, but a few are of books owned by the Goodwin sisters. I'm interested in the way in which photographing things that may um, have a historical presence is a, is a way of folding time in a sense, and so that that object existed in, let's say, the 18th century or the 19th century, and so by pho photographing it today, I'm making you know, this connection through the object that sort of goes through time. The Goodwin sisters' books were the ones that abolitionists everywhere were reading. This one, called the Clarkson Book, described the transatlantic slave trade. Inside there's an illustration of how um, slaves were packed in the, into the ships and, and, and the, a kind of diagram of how you could get the most human bodies into the bow of a ship and, and into, the low, into the hole of the ship and, and the arrangement. We don't have to see all of that stuff, but as, as long as you know that that's what's inside the book and we look at just this sort of one edge of the book where we see the wear and the tear over the years, I think there's a tremendous you know, sense of 
of how it would how it connects back in time. In the process of the research, we found much more than what we actually ended up including in the project. Uh, all that said points out that this is a very rich region. It's a very rich story. And stories untold are stories that are forgotten. And we felt as though this is not a story that should be forgotten. There's a rich history of the Underground Railroad in Salem County. There's the story of Thomas Clement Oliver, who became a famous conductor, and Amy Reckless, owned by the Johnsons, who beat her severely, but she escaped. There's the story of a slave catcher, himself put on trial in a local hotel. There's a story here about John Stuart Rock, who was a major figure in African-American history, born here in Salem, and ultimately became the first African-American attorney admitted to practice law before the U.S. Supreme Court. His story begins here in Salem. The final location is in Woodstown, which is just north of here, and at Spencer UAME Church, there are buried over 20 U.S. colored troops who served during the Civil War and fought for freedom. We are freedom fighters who rest here, members of the U.S. colored troops, veterans of the great Civil War, and proud sons of Salem County. This cemetery is one of the, one, one of the steps in the Seven Steps uh, project. It contains a number of uh, uh, veterans of different wars, but primarily uh, the involvement of the veterans of the Civil War is what connects it to the seven steps, um, from slavery to freedom, thinking of that boundary of the Civil War being that other end. Everywhere you go throughout this region, you find, without having to go very far, these small cemeteries, some of them larger, but with small sections, that have these Civil War veterans. Yes. We did our part to win that war, to win freedom for all our brothers and sisters. And here we rest in honor and peace. <laughs>